He's been in football for a long time, played at three clubs, has had a fearsome reputation as one of the most innovative minds in the game through his time at Geelong and then Port Adelaide West Coast where John Worsfold hasn't held back any praise on Phil Walsh for uh, the mastery of what he was able to build in their midfield and then back to Port Adelaide with more success and then across to Adelaide. Um, you can just, I, it's hard to imagine how um, his players feel this morning just knowing what a shock it is from the outside. Uh, and just sort of thinking through, he, he had such a lovely way about him as he talked about football through the prism of art last week to great humour and acclaim in football. He would talk about it as, as war in the formations um, that he would bring to the game. Um, uh, it's, 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 difficult. it's actually quite difficult to know what to say. He came, when he got the job, he came over here and we, we sat down in the cafe across the road and just talked through his journey and why. And... He had a great understanding of what he didn't have. So when he got the job, he privately took himself overseas and did a course about man management okay. because he thought that was his great failing. He knew football. He knew tactics. He was a demanding man. But what he didn't have across the journey had been how to manage People. Generation Y and 42 of them in all different ways. And that was the one thing that he privately did to set himself up for it. And I know that he's formed a very close connection to his players in a short period of time. Now, Jared, uh, we hear this morning that the Crows players are gathering at the club's headquarters at West Lakes. What do you think, I mean, I know it's only early stages, but what do you think will happen with the game plan for this weekend? I don't think it would be fair to ask young men to go out and play in this circumstance, would it? That, I mean, that's my initial reaction. Is yeah, that's your, that's your thought as well, PK. Well, it would uh, be very, very challenging. Not only would the Crows not want to play, but um, I don't think Geelong would want to play that either. Um, mm -hmm. Just keeping in mind that the close working environment that's, um, that Phil Walsh would have with his assistants and the whole football department, not just the people we see running around. So these are young men, 18, to 32 years of age and he's been their, their mentor and across the past sort of eight months their father figure and guiding them is I don't think it's reasonable to ask people from learning this news on Friday morning through to Sunday to even think about football. Is most, it? most people would take time off work with the, the shock of this news with, so, with such a figure in their life, yeah. um, let alone go out and work in, in that sort of public glare. And I imagine there will be a moment where as happens in all walks of life, people to come together and they galvanise and go, we want to do this for the person who has departed, but I can't imagine that that's Sunday. And no, of course, it's too soon. Yeah, um, Jared, we would imagine that the AFL, um, as a community, will rally around the Adelaide Club and the players. Of course, our thoughts are also with the Walsh family, who are going through a horrific time, particularly because uh, Phil Walsh's wife was also injured in this incident. Um, how do you think, um, from a football point of view, the AFL might manage this today and in the coming days and weeks? It is. I mean, it's so difficult because people have connections with Phil right through mm -hmm. his time in football. So that there are seven clubs. At, yeah. at face value that start by being affected. I genuinely don't know. I don't. Mm -hmm. Is it appropriate to play a game tonight? Is it played as you know, clearly there would be a minute silence observed and whatnot? Mm -hmm. I don't know. As, it's going as to be I'm very big now, call. It's very difficult to yeah. answer. Yeah, and it's a big game too. It's Hawthorne and Collingwood, one, one of the marquee matches of this round. I mean, what, what do you do if you're Gil McLaughlin, the AFL chief yeah. executive? and sport sport plays a secondary role to life it in does. these moments. Yeah. So yeah. I think trying to find that level of what's appropriate and what's desirable and what does football need as a, you know, in, in that terms of healing, but we're only a couple of hours into this.